welcome to this no respect edition of Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Today we got the review of the Blu-ray of the classic 80's comedy, Back to School. Back to School is a great fucking mid to late 80's comedy starring Rodney Dangerfield. Fucking, you know, this is one of the movies where they really took his, you know, his onstage persona, his act and shit. They really wrote it into the movie. Harold Ramis, one of the main writers of the movie, did a great job of really building a whole movie about Rodney Dangerfield, but also making it work as a movie too. In the movie, Rodney Dangerfield stars as a rich guy, fucking Thornton Mellon. He, he grew up, fucking his dad had a little sewing shop in New York. Next thing you know, he was expanding that shit out and stuff. He turned into a line of big and tall stores. But in the movie, I think they call it tall and fat stores. He really plays up that he's making clothes for fat motherfuckers. He's going to sell it to and shit. Ain't no shame in being a big fat motherfucker. Because Rodney Dangerfield got your ass covered with some clothes. So the story comes into play, he's rich, he's successful, he's got a young trophy wife played by Adrian Barbeau, he married her because she has a big pair of tits and stuff, but she's fucking annoying, she's fucking everybody, she's fucking the gardener, she's fucking the pizza man, all that shit. His limo driver, you know, his sidekick is Burt Young, they're both always grumbling about, man, it's horrible to go home, I have to go home, fucking, almost like a cuckold, this bitch is always fucking somebody. So there's a fucking party at the house, she's trying to show off for all her fucking, you know, high class, fancy friends, we get to see Rodney Dangerfield being fish out of water, just being a good, downright fucking guy, just drinking beer and belching and shit and being rude and stuff to all these yuppity motherfuckers. So the whole thing comes to an end. When Rodney Dangerfield finds her fucking some corny motherfucker in the kitchen and stuff, he calls it a day, we're gonna get divorced and shit. He gotta clear his head, he gotta get the fuck out of here, you know what I mean? He, he has to escape this house with this fucking slutty wife. So he goes up to college, and he visits his son who's in college, played by Keith Gordon. You know, Keith Gordon's telling him on the phone, hey, Dad, I'm doing great up here, I'm on the swim team, I got all these friends, I'm fucking all these girls. Meanwhile, Rodney Dangerfield gets it. You know, everything turns out to be a lie. Finds that his son, Keith Gordon, just a nerd. He's got one friend, played by Robert Downey Jr., playing a kind of like, I don't know, like a hipster punk guy and shit. Got fucking purple, blue hair and shit. So, you know, Rodney Dangerfield tells his son, hey, son, man, like, you ain't got a lot of me. I'm your father. I love you no matter what and shit. You know, we'll get through this together. And then Keith Gordon drops the bomb. I'm dropping out of school, Dad. I don't fit in here. You know, I'm not having a good time. My grades suck and shit. I don't give a fuck. So Rodney Dangerfield said, listen, you got to get an education, man. You know, I ain't got nothing going on. So in order to inspire you shit, I'm going to go back to school myself. I'm 60 years old. I'm going to go back to school. So great. Fucking hence the title, Back to School, Rodney Dangerfield in college. Great fish out of water comedy as usual. You're going to love it. So right off the bat, Rodney Dangerfield, man, the 6 year old guy, he's like the life of the party, life of the campus and shit, man. Everywhere he goes, he calls a ruckus because he's rich, he's throwing money around. He goes to the bookstore, he buys books for everybody. He goes to the bar, he buys drinks for everybody, man. He's always fucking partying. He takes the dorm room, he buys three dorm rooms, knock the walls out there, make this huge, like, penthouse suite and shit. Fucking, you know, Downey Jr. keep Gordon and loving it, they're living it up. They have a fucking party. <laughs> <laughs> where Oingo Boingo comes to play, you see, you get to see the see goofy ass fucking Danny Elfman singing and you know fucking the song Dead Man's Party and shit. It's a, it's a great man. It's a great '80s time capsule. Really cool fucking thing to see. Meanwhile, the problems start because Rodney Dangerfield's just fucking around and shit. He, he really ain't going to like learn anything. He don't give a shit. He's setting his ways. You know, he's actually paying a lot of scientists, motherfuckers, to do his homework. So he's turning all these papers plagiaristic and shit. So the teachers, they start fucking catching on and shit. You know, his main English teacher, played by Sally Kellerman, it's like an old lady with fucking blonde poodle hair, but there's something sexy about her voice and shit. Rodney Dangerfield has a big boner for her and shit, so he really loves her class. Well, she calls him out, you're plagiarizing this shit. Next thing you know, this snooty British motherfucker that runs the business class, he fucking catches on to, you know, all this shit's plagiarized, so he turns him in and shit. The dean, you know, kind of half-assed called Rodney Dangerfield, I don't know, but he ain't gonna kick him out of school because Rodney Dangerfield gave all this money to the school, bribed his way in and shit, so the dean don't want to kick him out, but the, the professors are pissed and shit, so basically the challenge of the story is Rodney Dangerfield has to learn all this shit, he has to pass an oral exam because he can't, you know, nobody can come cheat and shit, he can't hand in no paper, he has to pass the oral exam in person in front of the dean with the professors and shit. Meanwhile, there's a lot of subplots and shit. Keith Gordon, man, he finally gets on the swim team and shit, but he got a, kind of like a, not a bully that beats him up, just like an asshole bully played by Billy Zapka, his last asshole role of the 80s. He was the asshole and fucking karate kid and shit. So you got that dynamic playing on. Meanwhile, uh, you know, the son is fucking romancing some hot girl they can't get, but turns out she actually like him shit. So lots of good college fucking, you know, plot lines and shit going on. <laughs> There's some really fucking funny shit in the movie concerning the diving team and shit. Rodney Dangerfield, turns out, was an old-time diver. 
driver off the Coney Island Pier or some shit. He used to be in a stage show where they throw a horse off a fucking pier. I don't know what the fuck. But they got Rodney Dangerfield doing some fake diving. And it's just hilarious because you see him walk up to the diving board. And then he cuts to some motherfucker. <laughs> and Rodney Dangerfield mask jumping off doing all these flips and shit. So that's kind of like the subplot. It, it ain't real critical. But that's kind of like the, you know, the, the every college movie has the thing. It has the fucking party scenes. It has the sports scenes. It has the fucking, you know, out outsmart the dean or the fucking professor scene so back to school's got it all just a great college movie rodney dangerfield fucking humor i gotta say i really throw this movie on when i want to get in a good mood and shit it's it's almost to me like the perfect comedy like that so back to school not trying to fucking really do anything too amazing just a good fish out of water rodney dangerfield type story but doing it extremely well Making a great movie, having a great cast, fucking Sam Kennison has a cameo as a fucking crazy history teacher always ranting and raving about Vietnam and shit. It's just this type of movie, we all know this type of movie, but it's done extremely well. Like, I would really take this with any other school movie out there, college movie, whatever, I love it. I want to give fucking Back to School an 8.5 out of 10. Alright, picture and sound, I gotta say, I was pleasantly surprised. Fucking, I popped the disc in. You know, a lot of these older movies, they either look like shit or the studio tries to like clean it up and do all this edge enhancement bullshit, make it look fake. They didn't do it. Very nice film like print here. You can see all the grain in the picture and shit, but it still looks clear and clean and nice. Colors are really good on the campus, the fall trees and shit. You know, it doesn't look like a modern, slick, digitized Michael Bay movie or something. It looks exactly what it should be. A fucking mid-80s comedy, shot on film, nice looking film like print. I love the way the movie looked. And I gotta give them props to the DTS HD Master Audio remix and shit. So, you know, a lot of these older discs that try to get by with that stereo bullshit. Fuck that. They did the remix. Yeah, there's not gonna be a lot of surround shit because, you know, it's a comedy dialogue. But the thing is, there's a lot of music in the movie. And I gotta say, I was really impressed how some of these 80s tracks on the soundtrack sounded really clean. Really cool. The title song, Back to School Man, through my surround sound and shit. Just the, the the voice of the singer and shit. Like, it sounded really clean and clear. I was surprised by the quality. So, Back to School Man. A few little, like, little speckles and shit on the print. But not much at all. I want to give it picture and sound. Fucking 7.5 out of 10. Alright, special features. This is being what they call the extracurricular edition. I like these wacky comedy. You only see it really with comedy DVDs, but they always call it, call it some wacky name. This is the extracurricular edition. They did come up with some new special features for this shit. You got a documentary called School Days. You know, kind of short, kind of brief, but actually really good. Talking about the making of the movie. They got the producers now. You know, there's some footage, some old footage from the 80s, but they got producers, writers and shit, actors and shit talking about it. I was surprised they dug all these motherfuckers up to talk about, you know, kind of like a lost, forgotten comedy of the 80s and shit. There's a couple other little featurettes paying respect to uh, Rodney Dangerfield and a separate one for Kurt Vonnegut, the legendary writer. He had a cameo in this movie, you know, basically just saying these guys had died since we made this movie and shit and we all miss them. They was great guys and shit. Very cool. There's also a featurette about the crazy dive that Rodney Dangerfield, well, his, you know, his stunt double does at the end of the movie and shit called Dissecting Triple Lindy and shit. You gotta see the movie, kinda get it. But you know, that's cool that they explain, hey, how we did this. They talked to the actual diver guy who wore the mask and the wig and shit. So it's cool, man, it's cool. They went out of their way, they dug these fuckers up. Then we get to the old special features. They dug up the old archive shit from 1980s when they made the movie to put promotional features and shit. They got a thing about how Burt Young went from being in Rocky to being in Back to School, you know, being Stallone sidekick to being Ronnie Dangerfield sidekick. Then they got some TV spots, like some 30 second TV spots. I was surprised they was kind of in good condition. It's cool to see that. And they have the original theatrical trailer. It's funny to watch it. You see how different they would sell movies in the 80s compared to now. So all in all, man, like, I gotta say they did a good job digging up the old shit, creating some new documentaries and shit. They didn't just puss out on this. Fucking nice. You know, the only thing that's really missing is a commentary, but oh well, you know, Rodney Dangerfield passed on and shit. But back to school special features, they did a pretty good job. I won't give you motherfuckers seven and a half out of ten. Uh.